Dr. John Torres here with NBC News on his Facebook Live, this Daily Doc, explaining coronavirus, what's been in the headlines over the last couple of days, and then most importantly, answering your questions. So if you have any questions, please fire them our way so I can go ahead and get to as many of those as I possibly can. But let's start off with the headlines you've probably heard over the last couple of days. One, sports. You've probably heard that sports are starting to open up in different areas across the country. The government... So health experts, public health experts are all saying we need to be very careful about how we do this. And most of these cases, they are doing just that. NASCAR is probably the biggest name that's opening right now. And they're very careful. They're only letting in small crews, the driver, obviously, who's isolated at the time, and they're testing them. If they, get, if they test positive, then they have plans of what they're going to do with the whole team, most likely quarantine the whole team and their families as well. And so, again, they're trying to bring sports back as best they can, but at the same time keep everybody safe. And for now, that usually means keeping fans away. And so fans aren't going to be able to participate in these things in live, being there, but you'd be able to do it on TV for the most part or retrospectively when it comes out on TV later. But we are starting to get back to more of a new normal where we're going to start seeing things like this. I believe it was in Korea where they actually had a very innovative idea where they were playing baseball, or it might have been Taiwan, they were playing baseball, and they put mannequins in the stands, basically. So when the players are playing, when you're seeing it on TV, it looks like people are in the stands. I thought it was a pretty ingenious idea to do that because as an athlete, a lot of times if the players aren't there, it just has a different feeling to it. I'm a soccer fan. Soccer's starting to make a comeback as well, but especially European soccer. La Liga, Premier League, they're starting to look at how to come back and they're starting to make sure that when they do that there's a lot of testing in place and no, no fans at the beginning. Fans will eventually be allowed back into the stadiums, but more than likely you're going to see fans it opening up 25% capacity, 50% capacity, 75 so on and so on to try and keep things safe. At the same time, doing what public health experts say we need to do and making sure we keep an idea, we keep tabs on what's going on as far as cases in the community. If they start to spike, then slowing down how many people can go to these games, slowing down these games. So that's the sports things that are starting to come back. It's starting to head us in that direction of the new normal we're going to have for a little bit. The thing that's going to help us turn back to an older normal, we might not entirely get there, but back to an older type of normal is the vaccine. And there's a big race for a vaccine right now. Most experts are telling you 12 to 18 months before the vaccine comes out. I think that's a good time frame, which means February or later time frame. There are a couple leaders in the vaccine push right now. Two biggest ones, Moderna and Oxford. Oxford is just doing, doing their studies right now. They're doing human studies. We haven't had any information on that to date, but they did a, do a study in rhesus monkeys who genetically are very similar to us, and they found out that they were getting an antibody response in the monkeys. And when they infected the monkeys purposefully with coronavirus, they didn't get the disease, they didn't get the lung issues, particularly the pneumonia, that we know is a landmark of this virus. And so that's very promising. But again, we have to see what happens with the human trials with this Oxford vaccine, because even though we're close to rhesus monkeys, we're not exactly like them, especially our immune systems. The second one is Moderna. You probably heard about that today, where they came out with their phase one results, at least partial results for the study. In the study, they injected the vaccine in 45 individuals or 18 to 55 year olds. These are healthy people had not had COVID-19. And they found out that all of the eight of them, the ones that they have the detailed information on, ended up having an antibody response. And they had what's called neutralizing antibodies, which is the important part because those are the antibodies that attack coronavirus when it comes in, this particular type of coronavirus, and keeps it at bay, keeps from getting into the body and infecting the body and causing those issues of repercussions. And so that's good. It's phase one. We still need to do phase two, which is probably going to be about 600 people. It's take a little bit longer. And then they're hoping by July they can start phase three. Phase three is going to be thousands of people. And in phase three, what they particularly do, and they do it somewhat in phase two as well, is they get the demographics of who they're actually going to give the give the vaccine to. And so that means they're going to expand the age group. They're going to look at different people with different conditions, the ones that might be getting it first off the bat, the higher risk ones, uh, possibly even children. And then once they get through that phase two and go on phase three, they'll do more of that. Basically, phase one is looking at safety. Phase two is looking at safety and efficacy. And phase three, the same thing, but in a bigger population, a bigger group of people. Once that phase three is done, they'll start producing it if it does get FDA approval. But one thing that's unique with this vaccine, as opposed to other vaccines, is the government has said what they want to do is they want to jumpstart production. So they said if it looks promising through phase two, 
when they start getting into phase three, they're going to ask them, please produce as many as you can, even though they understand there could be a loss of money because that might not pan out in phase three. They want to make sure that once phase three is done, they're not having to ramp up production and take that six months to do that, that we can get it right away. And so now they're wrestling with the thought of, okay, if we do get these vaccines, how are we going to distribute them? Who's going to pay for them? All those logistical things they're trying to make sure that they have nailed down so they don't repeat some of the things that have happened in the past. And we can make sure that those who need it in particular get it first. And then eventually everybody gets one so we can get this coronavirus under control. But those are the two big headlines. One, again, the sports are starting to see sports come back on a very limited basis with no fans in attendance. And we're starting to see vaccine promising trials happening in at least two different fronts. Right now there's around 78 to 80 companies actually racing for the vaccine. These two are probably in the lead Again, most experts, I agree with them, probably won't see a vaccine until February time frame or maybe a little bit later. So if you hear about September type of vaccines, it might be a little early, but we'll see because they're certainly making big strides and we'll keep our fingers crossed. But now let me see if we have any questions. Dr. John, can families start to visit other family members in their homes? There's a debate so, about that. So the question is, can family members start visiting other family members? And up until now, we've kept the clusters very, very small. And so it's essentially the people you live with that you've stayed with, and you've basically uh, had to stay at home in the shelter in place time with. And now they want to expand a little bit, especially since cases are starting to come down and that curve's either plateauing or on its way down. Well, now what they're doing, and the word people have been using, is quarantine. And that quarantine is expanding that group. Say you have a family of four, and you've been living together for eight weeks now nonstop. Well, you can expand that a little bit, but most experts are saying you want to keep it around 10 or less. And you, what I always tell people is you want to make sure that those people that you bring into your quarantine are people that you trust implicitly that they have done the right thing. They have quarantined themselves, or they have sheltered in place themselves. They have taken care of themselves if they got sick. They have isolated people who got sick, quarantined people who might have been in contact with them, done all those things you have done, social distance, worn masks, washed their hands to make sure that they're protected. And so when you start looking at people that might be coming into your group, look at them with the eye of how much do I trust this person to have done the right things to keep themselves and to keep me and my children or whoever I happen to be with as healthy as, as they can be. And if the answer is, I think they're great, I trust them to do that, then certainly bring them into your quarantine. But I wouldn't make your quarantine much bigger than 10 people. And keep those 10 people part of that team. Don't bring any people, other people or start shuffling it around until we start getting to the next level where things open up even more, then you can expand on that. But at least I'll give you a little bit of breathing room. And so hopefully that helps out. Any other questions? Yes, I'm seriously having allergies wearing the masks. What should I do? So the question is, I'm having allergies wearing the masks. What should I do? And that is an issue right now because we're in the thick of allergy season. A lot of pollen is coming out right now. And what typically happens is we have trees in the, in the spring, grasses in the summer, weeds in the fall. And so it's um, one of those things where it could be that you're getting the pollen that gives you your allergies into the mask and you're constantly breathing that in, which could be an issue. So my recommendation would be, you know, follow typical allergy recommendations if it's causing an issue. And that means not going out on windy days, not going out on high pollen count days, Stay inside air-conditioned areas if you know the pollen count's going to be high. And if you do go out, when you come back, switch out your mask. The one you had, make sure you wash that off. One, to get coronavirus off, but two, to get the allergies off as well. And one big tip I give people all the time when they're out is when you come back at night, wash your hair. Just rinse it off because your hair is essentially a pollen sponge. And so not so much for coronavirus purposes, but for pollen purposes. The last thing you want to do is have pollen in your hair. You lay on the pillow. You end up getting a pollen on the pillow, then you roll over and you get a nose full of pollen. You're going to wake up with a lot of allergy symptoms. So again, look at the allergy counts. Look at how windy it is, how dry it is, and how much, allergy, how much pollen might be floating around. And if you are out then and it seems to be giving you issues, then go ahead and switch out your masks. Of course, there are the allergy medications you can take. It's better to take them beforehand before your symptoms get too big because then try and, once you get behind the eight ball, it's a little harder to catch up. But hopefully that helps out. Any others? Yes. When do you think kids can go back to sports or school? What, what are things that we can do to prevent or to help our kids? And I'm getting this a lot. When do you think kids can go back to sports or when do you think kids can go back to school? Let me answer the school one first. Most schools are not opening up until fall. When they open up in fall, you're going to see a little bit difference in schools. And so they're still going to keep that social distancing, especially since we know that coronavirus is going to make a return in the fall. It's never going to completely go away in the summer. It'll get better under control, but it's going to start spiking up in the fall again. 
And so what they're going to do is they're going to say, we need to keep kids socially distant, make sure they're cleaning their hands, maybe do temperature checks or things like that. And if we do find out that a child is positive or a teacher's positive or somebody in their family is, they make sure we have ways of keeping people at home and quarantined so they don't spread it to anybody else. That means that you're not going to see everybody at school probably all at once. And so they're going to do imaginative things. And probably people are going to go Monday, Wednesday, and somebody else is going to go Tuesday, Thursday, and then don't do homeschooling the rest of the time. School sports, probably not going to happen in the fall, at least not to a great extent. After school programs, probably not going to happen. You might end up eating lunch in the cafeteria instead of, I'm sorry, lunch in your classroom instead of the cafeteria, just to make sure that we don't spread the coronavirus around because we know kids, even though we do have this inflammatory issue that's going on in some children, it's still fairly rare, but, and kids do have a certain amount of protection, but that doesn't mean they're totally protected and doesn't mean that they can't bring it home to somebody else. So, so big concerns. That's school. As far as sports for children, they're starting to expand on sports a little bit, but they're doing that in a new normal way as well. And what that means typically is there aren't a lot of fans there, maybe parents, maybe, but mostly just the teammates. The teammates need to keep six feet apart when they can unless they're actively playing. Uh, sports that were, they're not necessarily next to each other, like tennis or sports like that, where they're basically the ball's going back and forth but the person's not, are probably going to open up first. Then you start getting more of the team sports and then more of the contact sports after that. And then eventually you're going to start seeing them opening up to fans and back to the normal sports that we know about. Now, as far as if somebody gets sick, if somebody gets sick, then that's probably going to end up affecting the whole team. And the team might not be able to play. They might have to quarantine themselves at home or at least stay at home, shelter in place type situations to make sure that uh, they don't spread it and keep an eye on their own symptoms and go from there. But again, I think we're going to get back to sports. We're going to get back to normal school. But that's going to take getting the vaccine or the virus getting more under control. Probably won't happen in the fall, maybe in the spring of next year, probably the year after for sure, though. Um. I don't have any symptoms, but I did test positive. How long are you positive? So the question is, I didn't have any symptoms, but I did test positive. And I'm assuming the question, I'm assuming they're saying they tested positive for coronavirus, which means they either got the PCR or the antigen test saying that you have the disease. Or it could be that they didn't get tested there. Once they eventually got an antibody test and it showed that at some point they ended up having coronavirus. Now, if you get coronavirus, up to 50% of people don't have any symptoms at all, or their symptoms are so mild they don't even notice it. Maybe just a little bit of a runny nose, maybe their stomach is upset a little bit. They don't really notice anything's happening, and they recover from that, and they don't give it a second thought, and then they test positive for antibodies. Well, that means that they did have it at some point. Plus, some people can have uh, this type of symptoms where other people will notice it, but they might not. And so most likely they had coronavirus at some point, didn't notice it, and then got the antibodies. You're not going to have the antibodies without actually having had coronavirus. But now if you do have the antibodies, that means that you did have it at some point. And so, uh, again, that's going to help you hopefully down the line. What we don't know is what those antibodies mean. If it does give you immunity, we think it gives you a little bit. We're just not sure how long it's going to give you those immun that immunity for because it's such a new virus. But as time goes on, we'll know more and more about this. But again, we talked about two different things in the headlines, one about sports, coming back to sports, and one of the questions was about kids going back to sports. That segued in very, very well to that. And the other one was about the vaccine, the race for the vaccine, and Moderna's noticed today that they have actually gotten successful antibodies out of eight healthy adults who were vaccinated. And so that holds promise, but they still have a couple more phases to go through. And it could be tripped up at any one of those phases, but let's hope not. Let's hope we get it. Probably going to be more the early part of 2021 before we do. But once we do, that is going to be definitely the game changer. So thank you very much. It's the beginning of the week. Please stay healthy this week. Please stay safe this week. And listen to your public health officials because they're going to let you know when it's time to be able to go out and do things. Uh, and when you do, make sure you follow all the directions so that you keep yourself, your family, and your coworkers and those around you as healthy as possible. Thank you very much.